Are you looking to build a gaming computer that is able to stream at 1080p 60 frames a second and have the ability to be upgraded later without you having to scrap half of the computer you've already built? If so, stay tuned because we're gonna be taking a look at a really good system build that is gonna give you a lot of features and just the ability to upgrade in the future and also be able to play games very well at 1080p and also some at 1440p, but also be able to stream at that 1080p 60 frames a second and play your games at probably well over 100 frames per second in most games at pretty reasonable settings. If so, stay tuned because we're going to be talking about that build in just a second. What's going on guys, Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And yes, today we're gonna be talking about a gaming computer build that's also very, very good for streaming. And when I say very, very good, I mean very good. It's gonna be good enough to stream at 1080p, 60 frames a second for most games and you know, with reasonable settings. And if it doesn't, you should be able to tune some of those settings back down a little bit and still stream at 1080, 60. And the reasoning why is because some of the components that we have picked out and I just want to state right now that this video is being recorded on 11 12 2020 and yes there's new graphics cards that are actually coming out this month and some that came out last month and that will affect the availability of some of these parts and the reasons why I may not suggest certain things over others just know that this build will probably be something that I might update um, maybe every half a year just to make sure that some of these parts are still relevant so if you're watching this eight months from now I'm sorry if these parts aren't exactly relevant relevant, make sure to try to do some due diligence and some research to make sure that you're not buying components for your computer that might not be, you know, up to date or up to spec for what you might want to do. But as of 2020, this is going to be able to stream most games at 1080p 60 frames a second with you being able to play your game and also, you know, get 100 frames per second sent out to your monitor and stuff like that. So if you have a higher refresh rate or higher Hertz monitor, this is going to be a pretty decent setup. And we offer, you know, through this kind of setup, the ability to up upgrade your processor, add more RAM, and even, you know, change out your graphics card. Obviously, it's something really easy to do, but your graphics card and stuff's not going to be bottlenecked by the system that we're going to be building because it's going to give you those options to upgrade your processor to even a really high end processor if that's something you want in the future. So without further ado, let's jump over to the computer, take a look at the PC parts list that I've got picked up uh, or I've got kind of set up and I have links for those on Amazon. Check those out below. If you guys are interested, those links do actually help support how to tech. And yeah, so over to the computer. So getting started, we're gonna take a look at the processors that we've kind of have chosen here, and that's gonna be an AMD Ryzen 3 3100. And the reason why we went with this is because this is still a four core, eight thread processor, and it's only $119. And this is one of those things that I'll kind of mention throughout this video, that if you have more money, this is might be something that you wanna go ahead and upgrade. Ryzen has a ton of different options, and that's the reason why I went with Ryzen is because very good for gaming and also very good for productivity. So if you guys plan on editing any videos or doing anything other than just streaming, this is gonna be great. And also they have other variants that can get you up to six core, 12 thread, eight core, uh, 16 thread, and I believe even farther with just the AMD Ryzen uh, brand that is. And it will use the same socket that the motherboard that we're gonna be choosing today as well. So that's gonna give you that flexibility of where you don't have to replace the motherboard we look at and you can still upgrade the CPU. So this is something you got an extra 50, $60. This might be something that you actually, you know, say, hey, let's bump it up a tier. And I'll, I'll leave a link below to some of the other parts that I would go ahead and suggest maybe you look at if that's the case. The motherboard I have recommended here is going to be the Gigabyte A520M Aorus Elite. Now, I'm not picking specific brands on some of this stuff. I just want to let you guys know if you have better preferences for other brands, by all means, look at those because it might only be a 10 to $20 difference. The only reason why I went with this because it looks like a very solid board. I've used other boards by Gigabyte before. Very good from my experience. And also this board, the reason why I went with it for a few reasons. And one, the aesthetic of the board, I think for most people is going to look pretty neat Two, And this is one thing that I want to mention to you guys. A lot of people go and buy motherboards and they don't spend a lot of money on them and they get only two RAM slots. So this is going to be for your memory right here. I can't exactly. Yeah, 
you can see the little mouse pointer, these four channels right here, this is gonna give us four bays to be able to add RAM in. So we're actually only gonna be populating two of them in this video, but if you guys wanted to, you could also go at some point and add another 16 gigs of RAM and that can get you up to 32 gigs, which is gonna be pretty good for pretty much anybody. Now, if you do more video editing and that's more of your thing, maybe you wanna look at doing 16 um, in each slot and go up to 64 gigs in total, but you know, it's whatever you guys are looking for. So it's seems like it's got pretty decent IO down here at the bottom. So you can plug in, you know, USB three to the front, uh, got all your front panel connectors, you know, obviously places to hook up your, uh, uh, over here, the SATA ports to hook up your hard drives and SSDs and stuff. And this is a good thing to explain about this motherboard. One thing I like is you have this PCI X 16 slot for your graphics card and above it. And this is the reason why I like these slots above is we got this one by. And the reason why you'd want that is if forever, whatever reason you might want to pick up like an Elgato capture card, you can actually plug that into this slot right here. And what that's going to essentially allow you to do is add an external capture card. So if for whatever reason you just decide you wanna build another computer at some point and make this a dedicated streaming machine, you can do that and still even have a graphics card in this machine. Just a lot of flexibility, or if you just say wanna capture console gameplay for whatever reason. And then we also have an M.2 slot that's gonna come into uh, play in just a minute. I recommend putting your operating system on an M.2 SSD. They're very affordable at this point, and if you can settle for a 500 gig NVMe SSD, it's gonna take care of most of your stuff. And then I would say on an external, not an external, Internal drive, but another drive, go ahead and put all your games and stuff on. We'll talk about that too. So currently we have this AMD Ryzen processor. We're going to be throwing it in this Gigabyte A520M Aorus Elite motherboard. And then we're going to look at the memory. So the memory I've chosen for this is the Patriot Viper Blackout series. Now, the only reason why I went with this specifically is because it's actually a high speed memory kit. So you're going to get 3200 megahertz, which is really, really good. And there are slower speeds and I'm not going to get into whether or not you need to have really fast RAM or you need to have slower RAM, but Ryzen processors tend to work better with faster RAM. And it, by no means are they going to be really bad, but you know, your mileage may vary depending on exactly what programs and tasks you are doing. But this is going to give us two RAM sticks here, and then we're going to be able to populate those in here. So like I said, you'll have one eight gig, another eight gig, that'll give us 16. And then we'll have the option for two of these other slots in the future to be populated. So you could have up to 32 gigs if that's a, you know, you get a paycheck and you're like, hey, let's add more RAM to the computer. And that's only a you know $57 or $58 uh, upgrade. So that's honestly super affordable. And yeah, let's move on to what I am recommending as far as the you know main storage for the operating system. I have chosen the Western Digital Black SN750 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. And I say this because you can see right here that I actually purchased this item not too long ago. I've had it in here almost a month now, and it is amazing. It's an amazing SSD. It's very affordable, and that's what I like about it. You can get a 500 gig SSD, install your operating system, most of your programs, and you know if you're recording and stuff like that, you can record directly to this, and you still have a little bit of room for that. And if you're doing YouTube and content creation and stuff, you can put your files on here, and then whenever you're done editing, you can offload them onto another drive and even put maybe a game or two on here uh, as long as it's not a Call of Duty game, which is, you know, hundreds of gigabytes now for some reason. But yeah, you could put maybe one or two decent sized games on here and all of your programs and your operating system, and it is going to be very fast. And when I mean very fast, I mean, I can turn my computer on or, or restart my computer. It'll turn off and then right back on in less than about 15 seconds. It's super fast. Let's move over to the graphics card that I'm recommending. And the only reason I'm recommending this one and You'll see if you go and look at graphics cards, the prices vary so much depending on stock. Currently, the 3000 series of the RTX graphics cards are out by NVIDIA, and I honestly can't find one at that price point that I would recommend for this. And the reason why is because they're just quite a bit more expensive. What I would recommend for somebody that's wanting to try to save as much money as possible. The reason why is because it's 240 bucks. Yes, it is a smaller graphics card. And I honestly didn't even look. Yeah, so we've got DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort. You may have to go ahead and buy an adapter if your monitors don't support one of these standards, but that's, you know, an extra 10 bucks. So a very small card. Is it going to run the most optimal being this, you know, single fan? 
fan cooler? No, but it's also gonna save you a lot of money. And this is something that I would probably recommend upgrading at some point. But if this is something you've never thought about, if you do upgrade and add an extra graphics card at some point, this is definitely something you can use in another machine, such as a stream machine. And this would be great for processing your video. So you could use the NVENC encoder. And that's something I would recommend if you guys use this as a streaming machine. So this is gonna be pretty good for 1080p. You're gonna be able to run it pretty much high settings for most things, and you're gonna get probably well over you know 80 fps in most of your games and sometimes up to 100 depending on your settings now, the next thing we're going to be looking at is the case now cases in my opinion are very subjective you could buy a case that's 30 bucks it may work for you you could also buy a case that's 200 bucks and it's going to work for you as well for people that aren't that experienced two brands that i like to recommend a lot because i love the way their cases are built they're easy to build in and i've bought them before are the Fantax cases and the NCXT cases. I went with this one because it's $57.99, so it's very affordable and it gives you a few different options. So you can get it in white, you can get it in black. I like that, uh, red, and then yeah, black and white. So quite a few options there. It's a very nice case. And if we take a look at it, we can see that we've got quite a bit of you know expansion if we wanted to add a bigger motherboard at some point in time. I don't see much in the way of cable management if I'm being honest, but yeah, no, there's cable management uh, right here on the back. So we can see that this right here is actually a tray that, you know, adds that. And then it also has some tie downs and two spots for some SSDs and some hard drives down here in the bottom. Overall, a pretty decent case. And the power supply I'm gonna be recommending is this thermal take. This is actually what I have in my computer currently is a thermal take it is a different variant as it says different variation i believe i have the 700 watt in mine but for this computer build a 500 watt is going to be actually pretty good and it's going to be pretty quiet mine is very quiet most of the time and i don't ever hear it it's going to do what you need it is not modular so that means it is going to always have these but you can shove those down in the basement of the case right here and just kind of leave it. And for the most part, this build is going to be really, really good for you. And if you have any concerns, I'll try to see if I can find some benchmarks of people running the CPU and GPU combo together so you can actually see what kind of frame rates they're getting in game and all that stuff. Also, I'll be providing a link to this PC part pickers list that will be in the description down below, as well as links with all of these different products that I've went ahead and recommended today. And yeah, let's go ahead and talk about this some more. So yeah, as far as this build goes, I think it's gonna be pretty good for most people that are wanting to get into streaming and they're not wanting to break the bank. And the best part is, is it comes in at $666.93 and I'm going to say that this is a $700 PC build. Some people would like to try to say and pass it off that it's a $650 PC build, but if you build computers, you know that it's not going to be the only cost that you're going to have associated with this. You may want to pick up a keyboard and mouse if you guys don't have, you know, some gaming ones already. That might be something you're interested in. Or if you're streaming, maybe this leaves you a little bit of budget to go ahead and buy a webcam. Also, if you don't have a Windows installation media, this is gonna leave you a little bit of money to go ahead and go buy Windows. Now, if you buy Windows directly from them, I know by no means you're gonna get it for you know 30 bucks, but there are websites out there that can actually help you uh, save a little bit of money and still get Windows 10 Home or Pro for you know about 20 to 30 bucks. So that is where I would suggest taking that other money. And as far as this PC build, I think it's great. And the reason why is because in 2020, I think you do need an SSD. And the reason why is because it just gives you that flexibility of knowing that your stuff is gonna load fast. And whenever you're streaming and then whenever you're gaming, you don't want one of those to be bottlenecked. And on a hard drive, it is very possible that can happen, especially if you wanna record while you're streaming. This gives you the flexibility of having something that's really fast and able to process a lot of data, or at least move a lot of data. Your processor on the other hand is gonna be four cores, eight threads. It's gonna be pretty good. And if you want to go ahead and have that of mind for editing and streaming to be even better. There are other options that only cost another 50 bucks to uh, another 100 or 200, depending on how much money you want to spend. So if you want to dump more money into this and make this a thousand dollar build or make this an $800 build, it's very easy to do so and see quite a bit of substantial difference in performance. But as far as streaming goes, you're going to be able to stream at 1080p, 60 frames per second, and it's going to work pretty you know, modestly for that price point. And, you know, by all means, this is something that is definitely able to be scaled. 
So yeah, guys, that's gonna be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Go ahead and destroy that like button and get subscribed here on How To Tech if you guys aren't already. I want to thank you guys so much. We just passed 7,000 subscribers a little bit ago and we're on track to probably hit 10K before the end of the year. And that has definitely been my goal from, you know, I think about six months ago. I believe that's something that we can do. And if we get there, you know, that's awesome. But yeah, for the 7,000 people that are currently subscribed, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it a lot. And then also for the 3,000 people that are currently in our community discord, thank you so much as well. You guys are awesome. And your questions and your enthusiasm for streaming is what kind of pushes me to make these videos. It's something I look forward to seeing you guys' enthusiasm on, you know, yes, this is awesome that we can build a computer for this much, or I never thought about using these tips in this way to help grow my stream. And just that feedback, I'm really appreciative for. And also I'm super appreciative for all of our patrons over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for helping out How To Tech and helping us help you guys take your tech to the next level. Cause you know, a subscription, you guys watching the videos or you supporting us on Patreon, helps me make more videos by buying cool new gear and also different tech to go ahead and showcase to you guys. And yes, in the next few months, I do want to start bringing in more tech to actually show you guys instead of just talking about the technology. So we'll hopefully be getting towards that sometime in the very near future. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Chad from How To Tech, helping you guys take your tech to the next level, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.